Good evening and welcome to Saturday Night Church here at First United Methodist Church of Taylor, Texas. My name is Salafino and I'll be one of your hosts this evening. Welcome. And I'm Tiffany Charles. We're glad you joined us this evening. All right, so let's get started, Tiffany. Let's go ahead and begin with a prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this amazing day that you have blessed us with. Dear God, may you continue to be with us. Help us to feel your presence. May you bless everyone who are joining us tonight. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a new scenery for our Saturday night church. If you are not familiar with the church here at First United Methodist, we are actually in a narthex. And if you're not a church person, you're probably wondering, what? What's that? Well, the narthex is just a fancy word for the church lobby. We decided that today we're just going to try something different, a different scenery, uh, so to get a different view. So, new perspective. Yes, a new perspective is always good. Try and catch as many angles as we possibly can because we can't possibly see everything. So, uh, Tiffany is going to go ahead and read for us our text for today. And it comes from Matthew chapter 21, was it? And the text talks about, it questions Jesus' authority. And it also talks about uh, the father and the two sons. too. And I'm going to start off reading it. This is from the message translation that I'm going to read the first half of our passage. Then he was back in the temple, teaching that the high priests and leaders of the people came up and demanded, show us your credentials. Who authorized you to teach here? Jesus responded, first, let me ask you a question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. About the baptism of John, who authorized it? Heaven or humans? They were on the spot and knew it. They pulled back into a huddle and whispered, if we say heaven, he'll ask us why we didn't believe him. If we say humans, we're up against it with the people because they all hold John up as a prophet. They decided to concede that round to Jesus. We don't know, they answered. Jesus said, then neither will I answer you. Ooh, was Jesus being a smart aleck or what? A little bit. <laughs> all right, and the passage continues on. And then the, bar the parable of the two sons. New Revised Standard Version. Yes. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second and said to the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. So which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of the righteous, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Mm. Okay. All right. So that's our story for today. And so let's talk about the first part of the passage, talking about the authority. So people were, well, it's not people, it, Jesus is actually teaching, and the people who had the authority to teach came up and asked Jesus, let's see your credentials. Who gave you authority, Jesus? We have the power, we have the authority, and you're not one of us. I recently had a conversation with somebody about um, how, kind of about this like hierarchies <laughs> and authority and you know talking about your relationship with your father in heaven and um, God is your only authority mm -hmm. here on earth I mean we have you know, people we answer to for different things in our family situations or in our work situations. 
um, and government situations, but really, when it boils down to it, God is your only authority, and that is also what Jesus is saying here. I don't need your authority or your stamp of approval because my authority comes from somewhere higher than mm -hmm. any other authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the Alpha, the Omega, that's it. And we are supposed to apply that to our lives as well. I mean, we have people we have to answer to, but we always have to remember that God is the ultimate authority in our lives. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that certainly does apply to the church. And so in, in the church, and when I say in the church, in the United Methodist Church, authority is a big deal. It's important. And, it's, uh, and it is a big deal when it comes down to who we allow into ministry to preach the word of God and to uh, preside over the sacraments. The sacraments of baptism and the sacrament of uh, of the Holy Communion, and so being a part of uh, the district of ordained ministry is it is a uh, we we don't take it lightly. It is a serious um, it, it is a serious thing that we deal with on on who conforms and who do we. Uh, allow in to be a part of the United Methodist Church after going through uh, several checks. So there's a psychological t uh, check, there is um, uh, an academic uh, check, and there are an emotional uh, check. There are so many checks that you have to go through that it's almost... Um, overbearing and it is overbearing it's it's overwhelming and there's so many different structure within united methodist church to be a pastor and there's uh, different levels of being a pastor so you have the highest form of being a pastor which is an elder and actually today we just had a meeting of our order of elders within our conference and so you, as an elder, you have the authority uh, to uh, preside over the two sacraments within the United Methodist Church, which is the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of Holy Communion. And then you also have another order uh, who is a tad lower than the elder, and that's a deacon. And so a deacon do not have the authority to preside over the sacrament However, they can be given that authority by the bishop for special, in special circumstances, special situations. And then you also have local pastors. And so as a local pastor, uh, your authority, you do have the authority to preside over the sacraments. However, it is confined only to your appointment, to your local church. You do not have that authority to go over to, say, for example, 10th Street and preside over their sacraments. Your authority is only within your local congregation where you have been given an appointment by the bishop. And outside of your appointment, you don't have any authority. And so, whereas an elder, you have the authority to go to any United Methodist Church and preside over uh, the, the sacraments. Among other things, you have a certain callings to preach the word, to preside over the, the sacraments, and uh, to order the life of the, the church uh, with, with everything that happens, administrations, basically. And, uh, and then to also be in mission. But uh, different orders of uh, being a pastor, and, and a lot of people do not understand that, but there, that is the hierarchy within the United Methodist Church. And to be ordained as a United Methodist elder, uh, it takes many years. And so you need a seminary degree in addition 
to doing an internship in the church. And then you have to go through this uh, many, many interviews before they say, okay. Uh, it takes a minimum of seven years before you can become ordained within the United Methodist Church as an elder. That is, if you get accepted at all. Uh, because a lot of people do get turned away because either their theology is not the same as the United Methodist Church, they may feel called to the ministry, but they may not be called to ministry within the United Methodist Church. Because what it comes down to, a, a lot of churches are just a tad different. They do things a little differently from other denominations. As a UMC pastor, a United Methodist pastor, we want to make sure that um, that my theology uh, conforms within the the Book of Discipline and what we believe in. Now, I was ordained as an elder. The bishop said, you know, to rise and take that authority. So, in other words, the bishop was giving me the authority to. Uh, to order the life of the church that I was now uh, ordained into the ministry as an elder within the United Methodist Church that I now have the authority to preach within the United Methodist Church uh, and to do the many other things. The easiest way for me to put this parable in context, in today's context, Jesus would be preaching uh, here at the church. And then some people like me, will walk, walk up to Jesus and say, and who gave you the authority, Jesus, to come and preach at my church? <laughs> we need to see your degree from the seminary. We need to see all your exams and screenings and all that. Right. We want to see it all. <laughs> it could also apply to our life. You know, the authority uh, is given but it also needs to be received by the recipient who is taking the authority. Because otherwise, if you just give somebody the authority and they don't take that authority, then, it's, uh, then the authority is not being put to use or it doesn't make any, any sense unless there is a giver and a receiver. Everybody's got a job to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your job is to be in authority. And if you're not taking on that authority, you're not doing your job. Yeah. If someone makes you feel a certain way, they cannot give you that authority to feel that way unless you have received it, unless you have permitted them to make you feel the way that they have. You have to allow it. Yes, you have to allow it and accept their authority in order for them to make you feel the way that you do. Like if somebody makes you feel like uh, you're not worthy, well, you can't feel that uh, the, the other person cannot make you feel that way unless you have permitted that authority to take place in your life. Well, I mean, I think this pa that part of this passage, it's just, it's kind of comical. I mean, Jesus is like, I don't, I don't have to show you my papers. <laughs> my authority comes from God, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, in everyday life, that's, we, we, we can't use that. We're not Jesus, you know. Yeah. We, he has the ultimate authority. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the, the hierarchies we have all over our life, in the church, in government, yes. in, in, our, yes. in our homes and our families. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that, that all, you know, uh, Jesus just put it in perspective. And then I love at the end of that part where he says, well, I'm not going to give you your answer because you didn't give me my answer, you know. <laughs> Is Jesus answering their question with question. a question, mm -hmm. right? And so, but yeah, that's a, that's a smart thing to do. But, you know, what Jesus did here, we can't always uh, do that in 
real life. It depends on the situation. You know, I can imagine the bishop asking me something and me turning that around. Well, bishop, I can't tell you that unless you answer me. <laughs> you might get in trouble. Yes, it is an interesting uh, encounter that Jesus was always trying to put people in their place. Mm -hmm. We all need to be humble. Even those people in the church that were, hey, Mr. Preaching there, Jesus man, where's your credentials? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because this, this took place at the, at the temple. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so let's uh, move on to the next part of our passage. It's the parable of the two sons. Mm -hmm. For me, to look at this passage, to look at this story, the, there are flaws with both of these uh, two sons, which could easily be any one of us. In some way, we always fall short. So both sons uh, fell short. One that initially committed, the other one who said no. Uh, but both sons failed in some way. Uh, so when you're talking about Jesus, Jesus is the only uh, unblemished, the perfect son, right? Isn't he the perfect son? Yes. Uh, so the perfect, uh, the only perfect human is Jesus. Uh, and so while we all fail in some way with either overcommitting ourselves and not committing ourselves, uh, I can see myself in, in both of these uh, two, two different responses. I what do you think? Definitely done both. Yeah. You know, we try to be everything for yes. everybody. And, you know, I'm always quick to say yes. But I say yes I, with my mouth, yes. and then my, my Google Calendar says no, and that happens quite a bit. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I have uh, done that numerous times where your heart wants to say yes, and you say yes knowing, so your mouth responds with your heart, knowing fully <laughs> you have a busy schedule, right? So you're you're at fault for overcommitting yourself. I'm at fault for, for overcommitting myself. So I know I've done that uh, many times, and we need to we we need to uh, I don't know schedule. <laughs> Look at check our schedule yes. and not and try and not try to be everything to everyone. Mm -hmm. You so know. we don't get ourselves in this situation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's about managing your schedule. And it's also about knowing uh, and being able to say no. Right? Because I think a lot of us have problems with saying no. I do. And so instead of saying no... We say, yes, I'll try my best, only knowing fully that you're not going to be able to fulfill that commitment, and you only end up disappointing later, right? So I feel like that's the, one of the responses here, was that he really wanted to, even though he was overworked and underpaid <laughs> and all that, he yeah. knew he couldn't do it. He's got a work commitment. He's got a family commitment. And he has all these other uh, committees that he's a part of. And why? It, it would have been better if he had just said no in the very beginning, just like the, the second one. But uh, but he, he tried. He was trying to be realistic, I guess. That's, that's what it comes down to, I guess. Yeah. But it's hard to foresee sometimes. Because your heart always says, "I want, I want to please." Yeah. And when you and when you disappoint someone else by not fulfilling a commitment, you disappoint yourself. Sometimes even more than you disappointed the person that you disappointed. Uh huh. I know. I've, I've, you know, gotten myself in situations, and I, 
had to apologize, and the person's like, it's okay, no big deal. And I'm like, really? Because I've been beating myself up over it. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Partying words, Tiffany. This chair is more comfortable than the pew in the fellowship hall. I like this location. Um, I, I think we can all take uh, from this Jesus being the jokester here at the beginning and uh, the parable of the two sons. We can always apply Jesus' words to our daily lives. Yeah. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I think my takeaway with the first half of this uh, story is that to use your authority wisely, just because you have the authority to do something does not necessarily mean that you always have to use it or doesn't mean that you uh, need to abuse it. So be kind-hearted if you do have authority over something, over someone, or whatever that it is. And so the second part of the parable, the parable of the two sons, uh, I guess my takeaway from that is do not overcommit yourself. Mm -hmm. Know when to say no. Not only would that be the best thing for yourself, but also for the person uh, who is asking you for whatever it is. Unless it's God, then you have to say yes all the time. I see people say no all the time. If God asks you to do something, God will make a way where you're going to be able to do whatever that something is. God enables you That's to do, to perform that task. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for joining us for this Saturday night church. It has been a pleasure and it's been our blessing that you are joining us today. So now we'll have Tiffany close us out in prayer. Oh, did you want to sing a song first? No. Okay. <laughs> Bow your heads and join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening and for your word. We thank you for guiding us each week to be more like you and take the great advice that Jesus Christ has offered us from his time here on earth and his word. We thank you for all our blessings, when, and we ask you to stay with us this week as we navigate through another week in your world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.